hello and good morning again so now we will be moving forward and uh, we will discussing this uh, interesting case of one uh, we have discussed in previous lecture up to uh, question number 45 that was uh, previously discussed now let's discuss about the uh, question number 46 that is um, about a 25 year old man gets into a fight at a local bar and punch into the another a person in the mouth the following day his first become infected and he visit a local urgent care center exit from the wound is culture on the blood and chocolate agar and reveal a gram negative rods that have a bleach like order which of the following agent is most likely the cause and if you understand the thing that there is a what are the options you have given what are the hint you have given in the question first we have to understand this is a case of the uh, fist injury and I, if you remember you can go through the um, previous uh, lecture previous video where we have discussed about this uh, bites infection that is the human bite dog bite cat bite and they scratch due to the car, uh, dog and cat scratch there will be the cat scratch disease and angel uh, bacillary angiomatosis in the immunocompromised host due to a scratch by the cat or dog and by the human bite there was the Echinella cotodens, then there was a dog bite, and then one was the uh, like cat bite, which was responsible for the Parsura multi multisoda. So, there are the different organism that was responsible for causing the different infection due to the bite. And we have discussed, you can go to the ch chapter, uh, or I'll provide the link over below to go through it. Okay, so uh, what are the options we have? Uh, there is a fight at a local bar, and punches and other mouth so there you have understood this is related to the human bite so the human bite the organism is echinella corrodens but is this the f how we can narrow down to that bacteria they will give some hint and the, what are the hint they have given the following day the fist become infected and visit a local urgent care center exuded from the wound is culture on the blood and chocolate agar and that reveals gram negative rods that has a bleach like odor so that is important so they are saying you uh, there is a wound infection there was a fight going on there was an injury into your hand there was a bite in the hand okay and because of that the wound get infected now they have cultured and they grow, have grown the organism and the organism gram negative that has a bleach like order so every organism has some characteristics like bleach like order is one of the characteristic feature of echinella codonans and they are gram negative bacteria so in this way you can diagnose the urea can diagnose your infection or you can reach to your diagnosis okay I, I will again urge you to go back and listen to the video this is the revision of the USML step 1 2020 microbiology where you will find that there are the some of the uh, bites that the human bite cat, cat bite dog bite the infection and what are the bacteria what are the symptoms how these are developed that's all are mentioned over there I'll provide the link in this video below as well okay let's move forward now we have another question of a 45 year old woman present to the emergency department so they are talking about the age and sex so this is a 45 years old woman present to the emergency department with intense pain in her lower back and burning sensation upon urination so up to now you have to understand a lot of things they are taking okay they are saying a middle-aged woman with lower back pain as well as problem in urination so there is a urinary tract infection as well as pain is there the pain is back so you have to understand it is not tender on your hypogastric region or a renal angle so if hypogastric region is tender then you understand it is the lower uti if renal angle is tender you understand it is the upper uti but they are saying there is a back pain as well so there must be something that is causing the con continuous pain and if it is related to uti then you have to think of the stone as well so there is a there is any infection in the urine tract that has lead to the stone formation as well as urine tract infection is there that much you have to correlate that much you have to think so they are talking about the same thing uh, let me uh, highlight one more time they are saying a 45 year old woman present to the ER with what are the low her back pain and burning sensation upon urination so there is a burning sensation there is a pain so this two different feature has two different meaning pain is indicating there is the stone inside your uh, in, inside her body and the urination problem is obviously indicating the UTI and both can be correlated because a urinary tract infection some of the organism is there that can lead to that can precipitate to the stone formation so 
A urine culture was taken on plate in the McConkie agar. You know, can remember the McConkie agar, which is a different cell media, or say uh, that can stand between, differentiate between the gram positive and gram negative. Among gram negative, also they can differentiate as a lactose fermenting pink colony and non lactose fermenting colony. Okay, and this on McConkie agar, gram negative rods that do not ferment lactose were identified. Which of the virulence factor of the causative agent is most likely important to pathogenesis? Let me take, take you over to the Kaplan book, USML Step 1 2020 Microbiological book, book where we will understand uh, this is Bordetella, Burkholderia. So, uh, we are talking about Nigeria, then this is the okay. So, this is the condition gram negative bacteria where they have different lactose fermenter, lactose fermenter, I cheek formula that is the C that formula was C E E K. Sick. that is the cytobacter enterobacter estericia coli and klebsiella this was the lactose fermenting coli then we were talking about this lactose non-fermenter and lactose non-fermenter where that is pseudomonas burkholderia salmonella proteus sigella and yersinia among them among them they are talking this type of among this of the organism you have to find some one organism that is causing the urinary infection as well as as well as stone formation and we know the most common cause of urinary tract infection is E. coli but they are already said this is not the lactose fermenter they are non lactose fermenter they are the pale colony so your organism may be pseudomonas burkholderia salmonella proteus sigella and yersinia among them only this salmonella will not cause uti sigella yersinia will not cause uti burkholderia will rare chances of causing uti they may be in the hospital required infection only the chances remain the pseudomonas and proteus pseudomonas is very less cause of urinary tract infection so there must probably chance in non lactose fermenter remain the proteus only so your answer should be proteus so let me take cover there so bacteria bonding sensation are taken a split on McConkie agar gram negative rods that did not ferment lactose or identify which virulence factor of the causative agent is most likely important to the pathogenesis and since you have reached the diagnosis of the bacteria that is the non lactose fermenter that is this is gram negative rods that do not ferment lactose so they are pale colony non lactose fermenter and that belongs to the pseudomonas or say uh, this uh, proteus and proteus is capsulated not you have catalyst positive yes but this is not the uh, important for pathogenesis coagulase is for staphylococcus or yes so we have nothing to do with. this is not related to the exotoxin and we know that our proteus organism is highly ureas positive so the diagnosis is ureases which is the takes place which plays the role in the pathogenesis of the urinary tract infection and stone formation now let's move further again and we are now a, on a question 48 where there is a 70 year old man so we have now old man is hospitalized with an infection for an infection and treated with clindamycin so there is a uh, person adult person you can say old person they have gone to the hospital where they have been hospitalized and they have treated for clindamycin for an infection that may be a skin infection or other anaerobic infection the patient improves and returned to his nursing home so they have improved and returned to the nursing home two weeks later he is rushed to the emergency room with fever loose and mucoid green stool so what you are saying there was a man who there were the old people who has gone to the hospital for some of the uh, indication like skin infection or anaerobic infection he received the clindamycin he got cured and he had come back but after a few days again after how many days there's so a two weeks they have found he is having profuse watery di profuse diarrhea that is green uh, green and mucoid green with fever so you have to understand okay they are talking about something that was related to his hospital he came back returned back and then he developed this and something has happened what has happened he has received the antibiotics antibiotic has caused the killing that kills your normal flora and helps and flourish the growth of this clostridium difficile because of that there is a abundant clostridium difficile they have uh, multiplied they have produced the toxin they have formed the these are the condition they will give you for something more to an reach to the Clostridium deficient. They will say the diarrhea is voluminous. He is having severe abdominal pain. Sibinoscopy also reveals the yellow white plaques. So they have a lot of information. They are giving. This is the post antibiotic. After two weeks, developing diarrhea and fever. 
there can be a lot of reason but they have they will narrow down it to you and they say that diarrhea is voluminous voluminous is having severe abdominal pain the sigma copy when they have done the sigma discopy then they have found the yellowish plague in the intestine and that is the confirmatory for your cholesterol empty cell so you have to understand something look this is the young hospital uh, this is the old man who has been treated with the clindamycin they improves and return back then then again came with the this water fever and uh, diarrhea you can think of a lot of things you can think of he has taken into the gun to the restaurant he will may have the this uh, for gastroenteritis and food poisoning due to some local bacteria like e coli or staph enterotoxin other bacteria campylobacter sigella salmonella you can think a lot of organism but they will obviously narrow down to you uh, till now we know this is the fever and fever and loses to they are even given given you the voluminous diarrhea and severe abdominal pain although voluminous diarrhea can be in the vibrio cholera but there will no abdominal pain so that will differentiate so you have been some information clinically as well now they are talking about the toxic mega colon or say pain abdomen due to this cholesterol deficit but they have confirmed by giving you the sigmoscopy of his colon reveal yellow white plague so there is a low white plague that is a pseudo membrane which is formed only in the cholesterol deficit so your diagnosis is cholesterol deficit now let's see what they have asked they have not asked about the cholesterol deficit so you should be very careful about your questions that is asked at the end of their line at the end of your paragraph at the end of your question so this line is very important to identify what question they are going to ask they are asking what is the single most likely event or factor that contribute this patient current illness so why this current illness has been developed so why this colostrum difficile infection has been developed and now we need to find out our, in our options they are saying administration of antibiotic and which is the obvious answer advances nothing related to that drinking unpasteurized milk that is also not related eating contaminated cold cuts are living in the nursing home we since we have reached this has confirmed the diagnosis that this is the colostrum difficile pseudo membrane so we have to we have to Take the answer that is administration of the antibiotic has leads to the post antibiotic clostridium difficile infection. Okay, and that occur when we use broad spectrum antibiotic like clindamycin, cephalosporin. Okay, broad spectrum other antibiotics. Moving forward, we have uh, a 15 year old boy. So this is the newborn baby present with conjunctivitis you have seen the conjunctival infection iron stain bodies are seen in the conjunctival scrapping and this is the this will be enough for you to diagnose a case so they are taking a newborn that has conjunctivitis this conjunctivitis they have given the organism is due to some of the bacterial or viral infection and they have showed you this bacterial or virus infection has something iron stain bodies are seen in the conjunctival scrapping when you have taken that scrap that uh, slide the swab and then put on the slab and then stain with the iodine and you find something iron staining bodies so intranuclear intranuclear inclusion so inclusion bodies are seen when i stain with iodine so new one conjunctivitis scrapping is done sample is taken and you have found the inclusion body that is stained with iodine okay these are talking about this what the intracellular organism that is that is causing this iodine staining bodies and they said chlamydial infection so chlamydial inclusion body if you remember the chlamydia so this is gram negative okay chlamydia is at the end so let me take you over there okay so we have reached to the very Mm -hmm. So it's atlantic fever. In the back, then we have clostridium. This is gram positive. Scroll, scrolling. So we will go to the. Chlamydia infection, and if you remember chlamydial infection, there are three serotypes that is L1, L2, L, L3, A, A, B, and C causing chlam trachoma, D2K causing inclusion conjunctivitis, and then there was a like uh, L1 and L1, L2, L, and 3 that was causing the lymphogranuloma venodum. So, we are talking about here about this uh, chlamydial infection, which is causing you the um, what we are saying. Uh, 
inclusion conjunctivitis and that is due to d2k so you have to understand in this such, such a way so that that can be uh, possible to deal with the answer so hope uh, if you have not uh, read about this chlamydial infection so you should go back to the one of our uh, lecture where we have discussed about the chlamydia detail about revision section of usmle step on into microbiology and you can see over this is the uh, all of the information about the chlamydia that is intracellular elementary body is infectious form reticulate body is found inside the uh, body which is the inclusion body that is stained with the iodine and that can be done with the pcr nucleic acid amplification test cytoplasm inclusion body that is reticulate body seen on the gyms of fluorescence antibody stain or even on the iodine stain treatment was azithromycin or doxycycline even subtraction was given to for concomitant gonadal infection now we are talking about the chlamydia trachomatis that is a b and c causing the trachoma that leads to the blindness d2k causing the conjunctivitis neonatal conjunctivitis urethritis ectopic pregnancy neonatal pneumonia and l1 and l2 and l3 causing lymphogranuloma venerum so what is your our diagnosis so the most likely infectious form they have not asked you about the bacteria they have not asked you about the other property they have told you okay you have identified you have identified the organism that is chlamydia now how what is the infectious form of this chlamydia and we know we have discussed previously the infectious form of the chlamydia is the infectious form is this is elementary body so the infectious form is elementary body this is infectious form that is the elementary body that enter inside the cell bind to the cell receptor enter inside and then convert into a reticular body then they multiply and form the inter inclusion intra intracellular intra cytoplasmic inclusion and then they stick get stained with the gymsa or say fluorescence antibody or say iodine stain so our answer is this that is of what is the infectious form that is the elementary body is infectious form okay so we have understood this as well now let's move forward uh, a 50 45 year old man present to the emergency department with a certain shortness of breath and productive cough so there is respiratory distress with productive cough so there is a something bacterial infection is there his sputum was gelatinous and bloody so this is current jelly and if you if you remember i have taught you about the pneumonia and mainly about the organism clebsiella pneumonia that causes the current jelly sputum so the diagnosis is confirmed by now itself they are talking about 45 years old man emergency department with respiratory tract infection that is shortness of breath as well as this productive cough and his sputum was gelatinous and bloody so obviously he has got infected with clebsiella pneumonia that produced the current jelly sputum and the diagnosis of your bacteria is confirmed but wait wait they are not asking you about the clubsel anemone they will ask something else the gram stain of this putum rebels numeral numerous poly neutrophil that is polymorph nucleus and gram negative rod so you have they have given more information there is a partial as well as this uh, gram negative bacteria is seen in the gram stain which of the following description is most likely to fit the patient now they are not asking about anything about bacteria they are saying tell me the type of patient which who, who can get this infection who can develop this clebsiella pneumonia infection and if you re 